Michael decided to create a YouTube channel where we talk about life, marriage, relationships, and other things like that. So in this short video, you know, answering some general relationship questions, a little few, few Q and A's that we have put together. So uh, let's get into it. When did I know it was, I was in love? Um, yeah, that would that would have been the first date. I know it's corny and cliche and everything else, but I um, I just I just knew. Sometimes sometimes you gotta go with your gut. Sometimes you have that feeling when you know something's right, and I just knew it was right and it felt right. I know I was I was falling in love. I didn't say it right away, but I I knew what was happening. Hi guys, happy Thursday. It is January 26, 2023. And today we, my husband and I are actually going to finally edit our very first video for our Matt and Rose talk show. So this is our first YouTube channel that we want to focus on life lessons marriage lessons and relationships in general so this youtube channel will be based on our thoughts our views our opinions and our faith and beliefs so please our disclaimer uh, we all have our own thoughts our own opinions and views faiths and beliefs so if yours is different from ours we mean no harm we don't want to offend anybody this is mainly our thoughts and we want to share it with the world so um and for this video, because this is our first episode, it will be our pilot episode of Matt and Rose. And as you can see in the first video, my husband already shared what his thoughts and, and opinions are on 10 topics. So I will be answering the same questions that my husband answered. So here goes. First question when did you know you were in love with your him or her so when did i know that i was in love with my husband i'm not sure if i have shared this with him before i think i have and i don't know if he remembers but when we first met through plenty of fish that is actually a dating app, Plenty of Fish, that we use and that's how we met. Uh, we first started talking and it was just mainly for friendship. I was currently in a, a busy time of my life. I just started, I was very focused on my work. I wanted to just be a career woman. And I did not really have much of an interest to be in a relationship at that time. But my dad always says that you should try dating up. You should try to start dating. Have an outside world life than other than just work and home. So I did. And Plenty of Fish was the dating app that we used. So to answer the question when did i know that i was in love with him i gave you that background about how i met him and where we really met, met the first time because the first month we met in july it was after fourth of july sometime in july of 2016 and i believe it was around september of 2016 september of 2016 when i started I felt like I was falling for him. I felt like I have a crush on this on him, but I wanted him to focus with his children first. I know that he was going through a lot of uh, life-changing events during that time, and I wanted to give him also the opportunity to understand uh, what he needs to do with his children. And also at that time, he was also in a relationship with someone else so i did not want to be caught in the middle of that so after his birthday i waited about a week after his birthday then i told him that we need to go separate ways we need to stop chatting because i don't have the time but actually the truth behind that is i just wanted to distance myself because i know 
he has other priorities to do. And uh, I, I didn't want to hurt a fellow female because I'm a female. If I'm in a relationship, I wouldn't want anyone else to come in between my relationship and break that. So that's when I first knew that I was in love with him. But he never knew that. And I'm not sure if he knows it. Not sure if I told him, but I'm sure after watching this video, he'll find out. Well, our first date was Olive Garden in uh, Orlando, we saw US 50 and um, you know, we met up because she wanted to tell me something important and as soon as you started messaging me, I was like, well, if you're going to tell me something important, we may as well do it over dinner and then if you, if you have the opportunity to meet someone, meet them in person rather than just go back and forth texting all the time, so the best way to... Uh, start a relationship so we went on the first date to the olive garden and the uh, the rest is history so the second question where and when was your first date this is very easy even our children knows this answer we actually met in may 20 of 2017 in olive garden east colonial orlando so that was our first date. It wasn't supposed to be actually a date. We agreed to catch up because after seven months of not communicating, we started chatting again and uh, he wanted to have a dinner date. And that was actually a friendly date. It wasn't anything romantic or it wasn't something that we wanted to be in a romantic relationship. It was just a two strangers meeting up for the first time to be friends it's a friendly date sorry and now it now we consider that as our first date first impression was uh wow that must be her because after she was she was late man she was like 45 <laughs> minutes late um, um i was waiting there for a long time i was pacing back and forth at the restaurant as she showed up and as soon as she crossed like this little uh, this little red thing on the sidewalk, um, I recognized it was her. I was like, wow, this must be her. That's my first impression, really. Third question. What was my first impression of him? I was driving and as soon as I pulled up, pulled up in Olive Garden, I saw a man and I wasn't quite so sure if that was I mean, I've seen pictures of him, but I wasn't quite sure if that was him. But as I parked my car and I was walking towards the entrance door of Olive Garden and there he was coming to greet me. We hugged and we, uh, we said hello. And my first impression at that time was, I can't believe I waited that long. Um, my first impression was really like, wow. I, I was speechless, to be honest with you. I, I really didn't have much to say. Even when we sat down to have our uh, to have dinner, um, we started talking. I was still at awe of who he is. And it still is the same. I'm st whenever I watch or I stare at my husband, I'm still at awe. I'm still at awe. I just, it's like it's uh, it's it's like I I can't express it. I can't. I I don't have the right words to say what's in my mind and what's in my heart of how I what my impression was. I was really just at the wow moment. What do I love about the relationship? Well, she's very loving and caring, um, and compared to a lot of a lot of women, I uh, hated. I'm not going to mention certain cultures here, but there are some certain cultures out there that their women are not very loving, not very caring. And just just in case of once in a while they may make you dinner, and that's good enough to be a wife. Um, no, that's not good enough to be a wife. You know, it's it's, it's a lifetime of love and a lifetime of caring. Um, that makes that makes a good wife. Um, so so that's what I love about the relationship. It's far more, it's far more, um, it's it's far more high quality than some of uh, some of the Western women, shall we say? Fourth question: What do you love about your relationship? 
what do I love about our relationship? Because every relationship have its ups and downs, but what I love about our relationship is that I like to think that I have a best friend in him. I like to think that I'll be safe with him no matter what. I know that he's not perfect and he will never be perfect, but just the thought of knowing that no matter what happens, he's, he's there. That's what I love about our relationship. What I don't like is some of the, the drama we've had to put up with in the past, but I don't think, to be fair, it, it's our fault. We were, we were put in you know, high stress situations and um, at times we responded, we responded poorly to those situations. So um, I don't like the drama, but then again, I don't think it's uh, avoidable. So that's just, the way, that's just the way life goes a lot of times. And sometimes you just gotta, you just gotta survive the storm. <laughs> Okay, what do I not like about our relationship? I would say that he, I feel that he is not, he has not adjusted to the fact that he has someone to count on, that I am here, uh, he can lean on me, he can share what he thinks or what he, he feels. He's very reserved. He's a very reserved man and sometimes I have to keep asking, I have to do probing questions to just make him say what's inside of his heart and his mind. He's a very private person and I thank him for doing this video because I know it's very difficult for introverts and of private people to actually speak up and share what's going on in their head so i thank him for doing this video and for agreeing to do a youtube channel that we share our thoughts and our opinions and views so that's what i really hope that can be changed i want him to be able to open up more and let his guard down if you could go anywhere on a honeymoon, where would it be? Um, I've always fancied going to New Zealand. I thought it's a very beautiful country. Just an unusual place to go to. Um, you know, it's it's not fair going to the Philippines. It's not fair going to England because that's where we're from. Obviously, it's not the point of going to the U.S. So, if you're going to travel to another country, I'll travel to New Zealand. I think um, for a honeymoon. If you could go anywhere for a honeymoon, where would that be? Well, I actually have three places that I was dreaming for a honeymoon. One is Maldives, one is Hawaii, and one was Buffalo and, and New York and for the Niagara, Niagara Falls. And he has taken me to Niagara Falls a year after our uh, wedding. So I have fulfilled uh, one of the three bucket lists of what I wanted to do for a honeymoon. So that's where I wanted. Would you lie to your partner to stop them from being hurt? Um, I changed a lot now. I would have said I would have said yes, even probably a few months ago. I would have, I would have said yes. But what that really does in the long run is it beats you up inside. It hurts you and it hurts your partner more if you if you lie and you keep stuff inside. So don't don't keep stuff inside. It's better just let it out. If they're gonna be a little hurt, they'll be a little hurt. But just let it out and let the truth let the truth out. You can, you can let the truth out. A uh, you can let the truth out a particular way so it doesn't hurt them as much. But still, let the truth out. Would you lie to your partner to stop them from being hurt? No. I I think my husband knows that I'm very vocal, whether it's going to hurt you or um, no matter what emotions it might bring, if I always say what I think, maybe that's not a good thing. Maybe I should learn to 
step back a little, but I don't. And I always tell everyone, not just my husband in particular, but I would rather know the truth. Even if it hurts, it's important for me to know because if it's an important matter to you, to my partner, I would want him to be able to tell me so that we can work it out together. So no, I would not lie. If there is something bothering, if there is something that I know is not right and that should be discussed, I would discuss it with my partner, with him. And I think it's very important because it's part of being a commitment to your relationship. It's part of having trust in your relationship and it's part of faithfulness. If you could relive one part of your relationship, what would that be? Um, hmm, that's a good one. I think, um, I think the proposal, I think when I propose, so if I could relive that and if I could do it differently, I would. And if I could, uh, could relive the wedding, you know, I would. Because I want to feel those emotions again. I want to feel the way I felt on that day. If you could relive one part of your relationship, what would that be? I would say all the way back. To 2017 when we first moved in together I would say that I would like for us to sit together with all the kids and just lay out all of our expectations what we think and what we believe needs to be discussed as a family so if i could relive that one moment of our relationship that's what i would do there's nothing else that i would want to change in the relationship i would still go through the whole process of how we met and saying the words i do because i love him <laughs> Of course, of course, I love him. And uh, I know in my heart that he is my forever. So I'm not going to change that part. I'm not going to say that I want to relieve that and wish that we could have done something different. No, but if there was something that I could relieve on is that sitting down with the kids and as a couple discussing with them who we are in their life and what our expectations are as uh, parents and also be able to sit together and tell each other that okay this is our role this is how it's going to play out and this is our expectations this is what we desire from each other and how we're going to work it out to make it happen you have a date planned and your boss wants you to work over who do you let down you let down your wife or you let down work well i would absolutely let down work you know i have been through um i don't know four or five jobs in my life jobs come and go you know i've only had two wives you know like wives are well, a longer term thing than job so if you're going to choose between your job or your wife choose your wife every time and just just don't worry about jobs you know they want they may just fire you for no reason next week or whatever so don't worry about jobs money's money's not worth it money can come and go as, as it pleases but you know focus on your relationship you have a date planned and the boss wants you to work over who would you let down I always, I, I know my husband knows this, that I never choose work over him or the family. I always choose, choose the relationship, choose work over anything. So, for example, when he had a stroke and I know I was on a very critical stage of my work and one absent is going to cause a big uh change in my career but i would never ever put my relationship put my marriage 
to the second or the third i would always my god will always be now part of my priority but after god will always be my husband it's work career hobbies those will be always right after him it's always my husband my marriage You've made a promise to your partner. How do you tell them you're going to break the promise? I think you have to you have to tell them the reasons why. I think, like you say, if you you planned a a big vacation somewhere and you don't you don't have the money for whatever reason, then you just have to be honest and explain to them why, and maybe then explain to them how you can compensate for it. So you're saying, okay, you know, we can't go to Hawaii in July because you know, we don't have the money or whatever. But let's have about, let's, let's say, well, let's put a savings plan together. Let's go in October or December instead and do that and that's, you know. So if you have to break a promise, make sure you have a backup plan ready so you can, you can, you can make it some, somehow. So. You have made a promise to your partner. How would you tell them you have to break it? Well, if you have a very open communication and you have that trust and commitment and faithfulness with each other, it shouldn't be an issue when you have to break a promise. As long as you are open about it, you discuss together, then that should not be a problem because there are certain things that some things will not always go as planned. So if things comes up that you know you can't fulfill that promise, then I think you should sit down and just let each other know that things the is not going as planned and you may have to compromise on how to uh, go about that. So if that promise is not possible, then maybe think of an alternative solutions and then discuss with your partner. So, you, so for example, you promise to go on a date somewhere and then you know it's not possible, then you should sit down together and say, this date is not possible because of these certain situations. Uh, perhaps we can do it this way. So there should be a compromise within each other. So, so I hope you would. <laughs> so that is our 10 questions. First pilot episode of Matt and Rose. And I hope you guys like it. Thank you for watching up to this point. I hope we all uh, learned together from our experiences, from our thoughts, views, and opinions. And our faith and beliefs comes with it as well. Thank you. God bless everybody. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed this little video. Click down there, like, share, and subscribe. And I will talk to you again soon.